Pro Service Skills presents Service Department Administration, Service Operations Scheduling and Dispatching. Keeping the customers satisfied by getting their cars in and out of service in the most efficient way possible. That's what shop scheduling is all about. Easy enough, or so I thought. When I saw the notice for the dispatching job posted on the bulletin board, I decided to apply. I found out it wasn't all that easy. Boy, do I remember that first day on the job. Where's the keys for 643? Hey, Brian, what's the status of 659? Parts problem on 645. I'm glad the guy who was leaving was available during job training. It took a while to get the hang of it, but before long it all began to make sense. Making sense out of shop scheduling is what this Pro Service Skills Unit is all about. I'm Bill Doyle, the dispatcher here at Hometown. In this program, I'll discuss how to go about keeping customers satisfied by staying on top of scheduling workflow. I'll talk about what it takes to be a dispatcher, what a scheduling operations work plan is, ways of finding out service volume, and how to dispatch by correctly using a repair order log and dispatching sheet. I'll also talk about the movement of cars in and out of the service area. And finally, good communications. To discuss the job of a dispatcher, I'd like to tell you about my background and why I felt sure I could handle the job. Before dispatching, I was a technician for hometown. A technician must be able to work under pressure. I realized the ability to keep my cool would help me as a dispatcher. Knowing the service department operation is also important. The dispatcher must have a real understanding of everyone's service job. Beginning with the writing of the repair order, I knew what we all had to do to keep the customer satisfied. I also knew the kinds of day-to-day -day service problems that come up. For instance, I could understand the problems of the service advisor or parts department to name just a couple. Knowing how the service department operates is a must for the dispatching job. And as a Chevrolet technician, I knew cars inside out. Having a good automotive background, I could identify the parts and the skills necessary to do all types of service work. In addition, I knew what the other technicians could or couldn't do. Finally, I understood both labor and average time. Boy, does that help me schedule diagnosis and repair. Anyway, I knew all this background would help me. So, thinking I knew the basics of dispatching, I applied for the job. It didn't take me long to realize there was a lot more to learn. Our service manager gave me a quick education. He explained that the main objective of our dealership scheduling system was, and continues to be, to provide efficient service. Everything about our operation was designed to reach that objective. My manager told me that a work plan based on service supremacy had been developed to handle our scheduling system. The plan explains a step-by-step -step dispatching system which includes a written repair order, the repair order log, and dispatching sheet, and an effective communications network to tie it all together. The plan also has a built-in feedback system. If the work isn't getting out according to schedule, we know we've got to change our ideas so that we can get the repairs done on time within our work plan. I finally got the message that a dispatcher is something like a traffic cop directing the flow of cars. If the dealership scheduling plan is working, everything runs smoothly. But if it doesn't, well, then it's a nightmare. So I became hometown Chevrolet's dispatcher. Our scheduling system is running just great. Oh, every once in a while we had a setback, but the operations plan is designed to attack these problems. Our scheduling operation plan guides me in determining service volume, processing work, and using an effective communication system. Let's take a look at what I do to find our service volume. Every morning, I know my customers are going to start lining up. Their cars will need all kinds of service. Before I even think of scheduling the work, I've got to factor in the skill level of each technician, who will be available to help them, and if we'll have the service dolls and equipment available. The whole scheduling system can be thought of as a puzzle. What makes it up? Well, there are three major areas. In fact, we've already talked a little about them. They are shop capacity, processing work, and what we call word flow. There are a number of pieces in each area. Let's look at them one at a time and see how they fit. The first thing I have to know is the skill level of our technicians. Most of our guys have a service specialty of one kind or another. Some have a second or third skill. 
Knowing all this helps me assign work evenly to the right technician and assign accordingly to unapplied time. Time I could have sold to another customer. Second, every day I must know what manpower I have in hand to do the service work. So many things can affect manpower availability. Sicknesses, late arrivals, or personal business, to name a few. As soon as the technicians report in, I can get a handle on the available man hours I can schedule. Finally, I must know the service stalls and equipment that will be in operation each day. For example, if there's a hydraulic leak in the hoist or an electrical short in the alignment machine, I've got to know about it. I can't think of anything worse than scheduling a full day's work on a machine that isn't working. Service supremacy helps me out a lot in finding my service volume. I use the three forms they suggest. The manpower availability report, facility status report, and the technical skill inventory list. These forms and how to use them are shown and explained in the reference book that accompanies this program. Any way you look at it, before you can schedule work, you've got to be on top of available service volume. It's the cornerstone for processing work. Processing work is the second element of our scheduling operations plan. There are three main parts to our method. The first is to understand the process itself. The second is to understand the paperwork needed to do the job. And the third is to organize the movement of vehicles throughout the service area. Here's how we process work at Hometown. It begins with a complete repair order. It's so important that I suggest you review the pro-serve unit on properly filling out a repair order. With the repair order as an anchor, our dispatching flow works like this. First, our advisors give me the written repair order. Next, I give the soft copy to the parts man and the hard copy to the technician who'll be working on the vehicle. Before I do this, however, I record the order on my dispatching sheet. I'll be discussing this sheet in detail in a moment. Once the work has been completed, the technician gives the repair order to the shop foreman. He runs a quality inspection of the vehicle and signs off on the repairs before returning the order to me. Our foreman is the only one authorized to do this in our dealership. When I receive the hard copy of the repair order from the shop foreman, I call for the soft copy from the parts man. At this point, I reassemble the order, double check to make sure I have the keys, and pass the completed repair order copies onto the cashier. Then I note on my dispatching sheet that the job has been completed. Well, that in a nutshell is the path a typical repair order follows through our shop, and it works for us. There's a more detailed drawing of this process in the reference book make sure you check it out. We try to make the scheduling process as easy as I've just described it. In order to help things run smooth, I make full use of two forms to get the job done. I'm talking about the repair order log and the dispatching sheet. Both of these forms, when properly written, help control our workflow. The repair order log lists basic information from the repair order. Things like owner's name, year and model of the car, tag number, vehicle problem, RO number, the service advisor's name, and the time promised. I record each order as it's received. The log provides me with a quick checklist guide for the work that has to be done. The dispatching sheet, which is actually a continuation of the repair order log, is my blueprint. On this form, the whole day's work is mapped out and organized. I call it a work saver. Along the top of the form, the times of the day are listed. Down the left-hand column, where the chart joins the repair order log, our space is to write in the names and numbers of the technicians assigned to the various jobs. There are several methods or decision rules for writing down each order on the dispatching sheet. Service supremacy lists 10 different ways. For instance, you can assign work by skill level required, equipment, fastest technician, shortest or longest processing time, latest possible start time, first come, first served or by priorities. Each method has its advantages and disadvantages. Your reference booklet goes into detail on all of these rules. It more or less becomes an organized juggling act. Use a rule or a combination of rules that get your work out in a way that best satisfies your customer's interest. At Hometown, we write our orders on a first-come, first-served basis. However, we also have a priority list decision rule. In other words, some of our orders are given special attention. Listed most important first, our priorities are one, comebacks, two, promised completion time, three, customer wait, four, internal work, and five, drop off work with no specified time. 
Let's look at a simplified example. Before I begin, I'd like you to know that we start writing our orders at 7.30 in the morning. However, our technicians don't report in for work until 8 o'clock. This gives me time to organize the repair orders. Okay, let's say customer number one requested a tune-up and a front-end alignment. No time limit was specified. After filling in the repair order log, I gave the tune-up to Joe and the alignment to Bob and pencil in the labor time necessary to do the jobs. I then noted the tag number above the timeline. Customer number two also wanted to tune up. However, he decided to wait for service. Since the waiting customer is a priority order over drop-off work, I reassigned Joe to this tune-up and rescheduled customer number one. Okay, now customer number three drops off his car for a tune-up and brake job. We promised a completion time of 11.30. This meant another scheduling change. I could assign Chris the brake job immediately, but the promised time for the tune-up meant the rescheduling of customer number one's order. This is a simplified example. We have more men and machinery to handle such repairs as alignments or tune-ups. The example, however, shows the flexibility a dispatcher must have in scheduling. It really can become that organized juggling act I talked about earlier. Using a system that works makes the job easier. We use a dispatching sheet. That allows me to assign work by time. This way, I can easily tell when one of the technicians is becoming fully booked. However, processing workflow doesn't end with the dispatching sheet. The flow also includes moving vehicles in and out of stall areas in an orderly and efficient manner. To explain, I'd like to discuss one more order. Let's say customer four requested a tune-up, front-end alignment, and lube. In addition, the customer complained of a strange noise in the rear end of the vehicle. It was determined that the replacement of the ring and pinion was necessary. The advisor writes up the order and places the tag number on the rear view mirror. He directs the car porter to drive the vehicle to the service lot. At hometown, we've divided our service lot into four areas, marked A, B, C, and D. Within each area, we group model lines. In lot A, we put the Malibus and Caprices. In lot B, the Chevettes and Citations. In lot C, we park the Monzas, Camaros, and Corvettes. In lot D, the light trucks, vans, Suburbans, Blazers, and others. If we should completely fill up one of the sections and need more room, we simply extend the area. Say we have an unusual amount of Malibus and Caprices. We would use the part of Lot C right next to Lot A to pick up the slack. Arranging our cars in this manner allows for an uncongested flow of vehicles on our lot. We're also able to quickly spot any model. All we have to do then is match tag numbers. Okay. While the car porter is parking the car, the advisor gives me the repair order. Then on my sheet, I would list the order of repairs by service stall availability and technician skill levels. For our example situation, I would schedule the ring and pinion to Jack, the front end alignment to Bob, the tune up to Joe, and the lube to Greg. I then place the hard copy of the repair order in my RO rack under the repair category marked Axel since the ring and pinion work will be done first. This rack, placed behind my desk, lists the repair services available. When the porter returns with the keys, I make out a tag noting the number and lot location and put it on a ring for identification. I then place the keys on a board by matching up the appropriate numbered column with the final digit of the tag number. When Jack reports for work, I give the porter the tag of keys and instruct him to take the car to Jack's service area. I then note Jack's technician number on the hard copy and send the order to him by way of our pneumatic tube system. Once Jack completes work replacing the ring and pinion, he'll arrange by way of intercom for a porter to take the car back to the lot. Jack will then send the repair order to me. Oh, by the way, it's a policy at hometown for all technicians to let me know in advance when to get the next car so we don't lose service time. Okay, once I receive the hard copy back, I'll place it in the front end slot of the rack. As soon as Bob's available to do the front-end alignment, I'll send a porter out to the service lot to pick up the vehicle and deliver it to Bob's service area. I'll then send the hard copy of the repair order to Bob. I, in turn, go to my dispatching sheet and draw a red line under the original timeline 
representing the ring and pinion repair. This is my way of showing that work has been completed in this one area. This process would continue in the way I've just described until all the work is finished and the shop foreman has completed his quality inspection and signed off on repairs. The procedure is simple. If the hard copy of the repair order is in the rack, I know the car is out in the parking area. If it isn't in the rack, the car is in the shop. And a quick glance at the dispatching sheet would tell me who's working on the vehicle. In addition to writing and assigning each repair and moving the vehicles in and out of the stall areas, there are other dispatching items I'd like to discuss. One is diagnosis time. Not all problems have an easy solution. The time necessary for diagnosis must be scheduled. We use a system based on dealership average. We've learned from experience how much time it takes to tear down a transmission, for instance. I then pencil in that time on the dispatching sheet. Another element is carryovers. The last thing I do before leaving the dealership every night is start my next day's scheduling sheet with any carryovers we might have. Another special policy applies to warranty paint and body work. Although dispatching in those areas is handled by the body shop itself, I must log the order on my sheet. I then simply follow up with the body shop until the work has been completed. Without a good way of processing work, our service department would be out of control. The repair order log, the dispatching sheet, and the movement of vehicles in and out of the service areas are key pieces to our scheduling system. But as you can see, service volume and processing work doesn't give us the full picture. That's where the third major part of the puzzle comes in, the part that ties everything together. At Hometown, we call it word flow, and I can't stress enough its importance. I think you'll find that most order problems are caused by poor information exchange. And when it comes to scheduling, everyone in our service department is involved. As the dispatcher, I have to be on top of it all. I have to know everything that affects the repair order. Here's how we work together at Hometown to keep the word flow going. Since the service advisor has direct contact with the customer, he has a key role to play as a communicator. The advisor must give me a well-written, detailed repair order. Also, since our advisors follow up on customer calls, they must check with me on repair status information. For that reason, I have to keep the advisors informed of any shop delays or problems. It's also my job to tell the advisors when our shop capacity has been reached. When this happens, the customer is encouraged to bring their cars back for service as soon as possible. This way, we don't oversell service, which is a quick way to customer dissatisfaction. Delays and problems can give any dispatcher fits. That makes the word flow between me and the guys in the shop mighty important. I must check all the service work status continually. Any change means updating my dispatching sheet. And our technicians have been clued in to give me the word on delays and problems as soon as possible. Problems can also come as a result of not having the necessary parts. If a part isn't available, I've got to know about it. Following up on parts orders is important. I want to know the status of the orders at all times. I also work closely with the shop foreman and service manager. The shop foreman is in the best position to watch the shop. He can spot those problem areas that develop and keep me informed. And the service manager can touch base with me on any new dealership policies concerning dispatching or revisions of the scheduling operations plan. And I must keep the word flow going with the body shop in order to follow up on paint and body repairs and warranty. And I keep in close contact with the car porters to keep vehicles moving. The word flow process also includes the cashier. She's the final customer contact. We guard against things like incomplete or misplaced repair orders or mismatched keys. Finally, although I seldom talk to our customers, from time to time I do follow up with repair information. If the advisors are tied up, I'll take the calls myself. I can give the customer an up-to-date report with a quick glance at my dispatching sheet. There are several ways we can pass the word. In addition to a one-to-one -one conversation, we use an intercom system with a backup telephone. For passing the repair order from one hand to another, we use a pneumatic tube system. Some dealerships use things like flashing light boards to signal shop status to the service advisors. Others might use runners to keep the word flow going. Whatever the method, the objective is the same. Avoid scheduling confusion. At Hometown, we call it word flow. But whatever the name, we're really talking about communications. Our scheduling system couldn't work without it. It's so important that ProServe, P3, 
PS3789 was designed to cover the subject in detail. Beginning with the repair order, the communications process involves everyone in service. It's up to me to tie it all together with the dispatching sheet. Determining service volume, processing work, and using an effective communication system, the three elements of our scheduling operations plan. Take away any part of this total plan and you have an incomplete scheduling system. In the long run, that can only mean one thing, a dissatisfied customer. Well, that's our scheduling plan. It works well for us, but we're not content to sit back and think we've got the dispatching battle won. Recently, the service manager and I have been looking at appointment systems and extended hours. There are many things to consider before we can make a go or no-go decision on either one or both of these service options. Service supremacy goes into detail on the subject. I'd suggest you review the productivity and scheduling component if you're considering such a move. Whatever, our decision on the appointment system or an extended hours program will rest on one important consideration. If it satisfies our customers by improving our productivity and efficiency, we'll do it. Our whole scheduling system is designed with those basic goals in mind. We've planned our program to eliminate all the negative factors that might work against us and our customers. Our scheduling system works. However, there are other dispatching systems available. Programs like ShopTrack, or the automated Schedutron, or the computerized service order scheduling, or SOS system. Whether your system is manual like ours, or one of the program systems I just mentioned, your end result must be the same, the satisfied customer. Okay, before I sign off this program, let me dispatch a few questions your way.